My name's Steve Smythe, and along with Andy N and Amanda Steele, who are sort of sharing a, um, a camera, um, and then the three of us sort of organise Speakeasy. It's um, a monthly event on the first Wednesday of the month. I know quite a few of you already. Uh, it's great to see regular people. It's great to see some new faces as well, mixing it up a little bit. Um, and some returning people as well. So it's great to see you. So, uh, you know, that's, we've got some great readers lined up, I know, and we've got some new people, which is exciting too. Um, so what I'll do first, Janie, I was going to, do you want to go first? And is that okay? You want to kick us off or Janie Colburn, are you? Are Me? You, yeah, you're right. Sorry, my signal, but not very good. Okay, are you all right? Yeah, been, yeah. Yeah, is that okay? All right then, so yeah. if people want to, unless you're going to be really quiet in the background, if people want to mute, that would be cool. Okay, if, you, you know, if you're know, if you not expecting any noise or anything, then fine, you know. But, um, and obviously, you to chat facilities, show your appreciation or whatever, put links onto your publications if you've got any publications. And uh, use the reactions and stuff, uh, the thumbs up and the clapping and stuff like that, if uh, if you so wish. All right, so first up to kick us off is Janie Colburn. Welcome, Thanks Janie. Thanks very much. I hope you can hear me all right. Yeah, nice and Thank clear. You. Can all you all hear me all okay? Yeah. Cool. Well, I wrote about our hamster, who sadly died, but she was, so that's good, eh, hamster? And uh, she was an old lady. Uh, early on in lockdown, I was walking in a cave and uh, what I normally do is put my hand in to see if she wants to climb on, uh, come out and I play. Didn't, I was busy. <laughs> and um, so I watched her for a bit and then I wrote him about what it's called. Qualified quarantine gives on making the best of it. She's digging, endlessly searching. Minute but resolute, rummaging, busy, immersed, carefully fluff, and a bedding. Is she a your staff or decided to hide her trees? She's clearly got a plan. Don't disturb her. Within the caged, recycled sea of fibrous homogeneity, last, she finds the treasure that she seeks. Single piece of hair fresh, just the same as any other I'd have said. Hastily, she snatches it, victorious and pleased, and dashes off to make her bed. Thank you. It's... My signal's a bit bad, isn't it? Can you hear me? Yeah, it is a, it is a yeah, little it's a bit, bad, it's a bit but... sketchy. Yeah, but it's Sorry. part of it. Yeah, it's part of it. It's part of it, isn't it? Now it's part of the zoo. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sort it out. Yeah, okay. Uh, one more quick one, if that's all right. Um, it's one that a few of you've heard before, um, from the days when we used to have actions and venues. <laughs> hmm. It's a non stop mic drop situation, a cause of much deliberation. The poetry nights, there's a need for microphone height. It seems we have a broken mic stand, it just came off in my hand. Yet again, the mic's cut out and dangling, and we're awfully sick of wrangling with this wayward piece of kit. Let's stop before it's all in bits. As wild and fearsome as a deck chair, this gear's invoking mild despair. Can we find a way to prevent wreck? We don't need to have a sound check. Just do an hour. Stand against the wall. You can order us all by height and spend less time in a technical fight. All the five foot twos come forward, please. Still, I'm guessing it's quite likely this blessed thing will seize. I'm dying to give you some assistance when I see the mic stand put up resistance. You can't attack it like that. It just come loose. It's unscrewed, but not necessarily when you choose. You may observe with a brief assessment, it is made for adjustment. This micro stage is rather small, resembling a ledge. I'm wincing as I see the feet of the mic stand teetering on the edge. Don't put it there, oh fuck. I have to stop myself from jumping up. Yes, I know I'm a bit of a control freak. It gets mentioned to me pretty much every week. As if me sat here with my jaw clenched, it's gonna make the slightest difference. You don't need any interference. 
I know I have a problem. It's just my fussy brain. I have a tendency to explain. It's all going fine and a minor issue, a source of some amusement. Even if the whole thing's come undone, we're having fun. I can see how it goes. So I'm sorry, I'll sit down, shut up now, and get on with the show. Thank you. Thanks. Can I give a quick mention? Um, I've got a work, we've got a workshop coming up on the 25th of October on Zoom through the Bureau Centre for the Arts. Is it okay if I put the uh, a link in the chat box after, Steve? Just go All for right. it, Pete. Yeah, That's go for it, Janie. Cool. Thank you, Janie. Just find me as well. Thank you. Nice one. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks for kicking us off, Janie, and, 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 and me springing it on you. I put a bit of a running order on the on the um, on the chat, okay. But um, I'm going to put Gordon Zola um, before Tallulah, okay. And I know Mary Cunningham. I've accidentally cut you off, mate. I'm sorry about that, Mary. You are you are you were there. You were at the bottom. I noticed. I was looking. I know. I know. I did. I was starting to cut and paste and swap you with Gordon Zola. So, are you? Are you all right to go next, Mary? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, 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 I can do that. I can do that. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, well, I've got three. Um, I'm going to start with one that I was once uh, in a workshop, a poetry workshop once. Some, someone gave us an object and, a, and, a, and an emotion and said, you've got to come up with a, a poem with these two things. And, and the object I got was a white feather and the emotion was grief. So this is my poem. It's a large feather, the largest I've seen. I scan the field for eyes, reason, certitude, but nowhere can I see the tracks of the wild ones, a trace in the sky. I think, You've left it for me to pass by. And then moving on to a very different type of poem. <laughs> um, funny enough, I was listening to the radio this morning and an area where I used to live in Liverpool came on the radio. I was quite amazed. Uh, this area is called Rope Walks in Liverpool. It's, if anyone's been to Liverpool Concert Square, I used to live right on that road. <laughs> so inevitably, I'd ended up writing a poem about that. So here's my piece on rope walks, which is in, in the news for all the wrong reasons at the moment. Okay. This is the street of pavement beats, of ropes of people held in the sway. The rousing song, sung then lost to the taxi drivers and glass bottle bays. This is the street where people sweep round wheelie bin eddies and drum and bass cars. The slow effervescent funnel of fizz of would bees, could bees hanging in bars. This is the street stink of hops and hope of Saturday night and level with nose of oil from engines and ironing board shirts and sweet smelling urine beneath your toes. This is the street you long to be longing, with friends to hold a stilettoed girl's fall, pulling in numbers, looking for others, hold to the draw and the thrill of the thrall. This is the street where you become sober, to the sound of a trumpet, two streets away, to the stench of the beer being washed over, to the joy of the peddler, Hosing the day. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and finally, I was just going to do one called Chasing Cars. She started first, made sure she was watched, her soft expertise at the wheel accelerated cautiously, sped up on the long stretch, liked giving him the impression 
she was leaving him behind. When he stayed at a distance, she frowned, willed him to catch up, gave ground. At the town, she took it as a sign that nobody had slipped in between, held his look in the rear view mirror and pulled off with speed. The sun shone in her lap. She shifted, looked back less now, felt his rubber, finding her tracks. And that's it from me. That was amazing, Mary. Oh, thank you. Thank oh, you. you. You're so captivating when you, you're so captivating. Yeah, oh. I agree. When I've, when I've seen you before as well. Ugh. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> These things happen to me, so you just remember. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mary. Um, so next up, according to my list, is Eve Northley. Hi, Eve. Hi, Steve. Hi, yeah. I'm going to start with a political one, um, and it's called Sick Red Rose. O oh, rose, thou art dying, those insidious worms. Sorry, Ugh, lost it. Okay. O okay. Oh, rose, thou art dying, those insidious worms you sheltered at your roots have finally turned. They came in the night, undermined your foundations, and now my heart weeps, future of our nation. Thank you. Okay, my second piece is very light-hearted. Um, it's a, a celebration of uh, the end of the month. It's called Vegetarian Vampire. I'm a vegetarian vampire and my family think I'm mental. They're all out chasing blood and I'm at home with beans and lentils. <laughs> they waste life turning into bats and sleeping in their crypts while I dance to Justin Bieber and cook sweet potato chips. I'm a bitter disappointment to my dear old dad, Drac. He spent 200 years thinking this is just a teenage fad. I plan to be a celebrity chef with my own TV show. And so my ghoulish family are going to have to go. I've booked them a spot in the Priory to help with their addictions while I stir, stir fry under spotlights in my fantastic cavernous kitchen. I'm blogging and I'm tweeting about greens and jasmine rice. I've been trolled by Nigella and Mary Berry, which wasn't very nice. I'm writing a culinary bestseller with pinups of fruit and veg. My haemoglobin family think I'm living on the edge. I've just cooked a kidney bean curry. I thought it my best creation, but I was heavy handed on the garlic and I've wiped out the vampire nation. Now I'm a lonely veggie vampire, just looking for a soulless mate. If you're cheesy enough to fill the bill, that would be really great. Thank you. Thanks, Eve. Uh, it was good fun, that last one. Thank you. Yeah, it was definitely. definitely. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Um, according to my list, um, next, because oh, I'm going to put Mel, uh, Misty, I'm going to put 
set on the second half. So next one up is uh, Andy M. Andy. Hi, guys. Great stuff tonight so far. Okay. Hey. I've got two brand new pieces tonight. So um, in the run up towards lockdown before, I was working on quite a, quite a lengthy book on a project of the imaginary couples, how they basically where they met as children, as friends, and they got back to the couple and their adults. So I finally had a chance recently to get back to this book now. So these are two brand new poems in this book. So the first one's about when they were children. It's called Moving Down South. Was it when we were 12 or 13, Sarah, when your parents decided to move house and only told you the night before to go and pack your bags? It's not far. You told me in my room, well, keep in touch even though neither of us really believed what the other one of us said. Who stopped writing first? I don't remember, do you, Sarah? As I threw myself into my writing, barely into my teens, and you married young. Too young, when your letter arrived out of the blue, buried under bills, my two girls in tow, and a publisher on my back. Too young, in almost a rhetorical question, carrying your guilt on a platter and everything that went before, almost like you were thought I was listening as you wrote. That's the first piece. Okay, second one, this is quite some time later so when, they, when they're adults and they've got together as a couple. And the female were the one, Sarah, and it, she ended up losing her father. And this is the story about what happened to her father's records. It's of course, and it's simply called Your Father's Records. It wasn't much to show, was it, Sarah? For a lifetime shopping. Just a few classic albums from your dad. The rest been sold off for beers when your mum stopped his beer tap, which your older sister dropped off in a box without stopping. I felt sorry for him. Do you remember telling you that, Sarah? Covered in fingerprints, clearly dragged off to the local record shop and placed back on the shelf there where nobody clearly would touch them or deal with his abusive behaviour. Making me recall the way he must have felt when he bought them originally before he started cheating on your mum and started spending more and more money in the pub and ignoring all of you as you grew up and needed him. Purchasing his emotions when he put them back in a huff afterwards Almost like Al Green's, call me, come back home. Or simple minds, don't you, forget about me. Clearly skipping for his thoughts when he then died in his mistress's arms. Saying almost, my memories are now yours. That's me done, guys. See you soon. <clears throat> Brilliant, Andy. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Um, I just rattle through the running order for the first half, okay? Um, so that's um, so. Next up is Amanda, then Maria, then Juliet, then Antonia, and then we're going to get Reggie in before the drinks break this time. I remember what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. I remember what drink. happened. Time, drink. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Reggie's that is the drinks break, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and then. Uh, and then we'll start the second half. I mean, I've got we've got basically got the money order for the second half, but let's let's just focus on the first half first. So next up is Amanda. I, I had the poem uh, broadcast on BBC last month, so I'm going to read that. It's called Twelve Secrets Employers Don't Want You to Know." <laughs> Most of the time, when we advertise a job, there are no jobs. It just makes potential customers think we're doing better than we really are. When we advertise jobs, we put bets on how many applicants we will get. The winner gets to go home early on the Friday. If we ask applicants to take a test, we don't actually care about the results. We just want to see how far people will go if they think there is a job at the end of it. Often we will make you fill out applications, take tests, do unpaid trials. This could take days, hours, or in extreme cases, weeks. However, don't expect us to take five minutes to reply to you. When we send out rejections, they may seem personalised, so could say anything from someone was a better fit, 
to we think you lacked in some areas of expertise which we were looking for. These are picked out of a hat at random, so try not to take it personally. If you later find out we've hired someone with only a fraction of your experience and qualifications. On the rare occasions we do employ someone, we choose not on experience or qualifications, but based on someone who likes the same things we do, is in our age range, or perhaps reminds us of a kind teacher from our school days. Before hiring anybody, we stalk them online, finding out everything from where they spent last Saturday night to the name of their first goldfish when they were 12. Assuming there is a job and you are the chosen one, we will do everything we can to make you leave. Again, we will take bets on how long you will last. There is no such thing as dress down Friday. We just find it amusing to make new employees wear jeans to work while everyone else is suited up. We get paid 10 times more than you, but only do a 10th of the work. We like to stay out of the office all day, meeting our friends for coffee or catching up on the latest Netflix series. Then we will reappear five minutes before you're due to go home and give you our workload to do, claiming we've been run off our feet all day and it needs to be done ASAP. That's not coffee in the coffee jar, don't ask. <laughs> so good, Amanda, brilliant. You people may recognise parts of that piece from a workshop where we kind of run, don't we? So. <laughs> we never quite got dressed out on Fridays. When they, first, when they first introduced it, maybe it was in the, the 90s, there were some people who dressed better on Friday when they dressed down than they did during the rest of the week. <laughs> so next up is Maria. Maria Byrne, everybody. Hello. Um, I've got a couple of poems. Um, the first one, I've, I've, I've got the, the, the new ones. The first one's a um, change of the seasons. It's called The Seasons. Everything turns red and yellow and the full made up faces written up with it into skeletons as Halloween approaches. And then skeletal thin bodies are sentinel right into the darkest days, lighted only by candlelight. And the green, sorry, and the green grows, but green leaves grow somewhere, flowers into bloom back into life. The skeletons are clothed and their full face returns like a full moon. I used to hate the turn of the seasons, but now I like the change. Thank you. The next one is, um, I, I suppose you could say it's a bit political and I think it's an area that needs attention and it's called Curve. Living life on the edge of the financial wedge, carefully balancing amongst the thing wedge. Did we care? Did we care? Did we care? Did we really care that much? And what about the curd ball? And what about the curers? Are we only thinking capitalism? Were, were, were. Did all the people go out of that beautiful equation of love and care? And when, just when, did it come, become all about money? Thank you. Oh, that was beautiful. That was, oh. thank you. Thank you, Maria. Have you got another one or? or? Oh. Excellent, Maria. Thanks. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for that. 
Um, okay, our next reader um, is Juliet. Okay. That's me. She's Juliet from the bottom. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I have, <laughs> I've got two poems tonight from my new book that comes out on Friday um, called Confess uh, about the Salem Witch Trials. And the first one's called Anne's Apology. To apologize is to confess, but not in a way that takes too much responsibility, for it is softer and somehow less foreboding than the type of confession that comes with bowed head and contrition. To apologize is to admit, but not in the way that damns a soul or condemns the wrongdoer, for it is done to lift the weight of responsibility and tie a knot at the end of a thread that was simply a mistake. To apologize is to speak partial truths out of both sides of one's mouth, for it seeks absolution and penance all on its own without the pain inflicted. To apologize is to prove piety held in the soul of the sinner, for it sheds tears to cleanse and salt to cure an open wound. Anne's apology is above all supremely not her fault. Confessed freely in public, blushed with half responsibilities and no real truths. Thank you. Um, and the next one is, it's kind of about how, I don't know, we're all looking for help somewhere. And sometimes people turn to prayers or um, maybe spells or magic, and how we're all just looking for a little bit of help and where we can find that, of prayers and spells. Hushed whispers murmur past lips. These thoughts, once silent desires or pleas, now lifted off the tongue to the omniscient. I want to know if anyone is wont to listen to these words, entreaties seeking ears. Learnt by muscle memory, a rearranging of vowels and consonants to words that anchor personal pain, to words that anchor an adoration, to words that anchor a sea of humanity tossed about in godly storms. To whom shall I offer my conjured words and phrases fashioned from the depths of my ocean? Churches speak of spirits, of a father, Janus faced, with hands to heal and condemn. Covens speak of spirits, of mothers holding elements with hands to nurture and destroy. A rearrangement of letters, constellations moved about the sky. There are no more navigations, only false promises and closed eyes. I could hold them fold them in my heart or let them go in the tides, these prayers, these spells, sinking ships and maelstroms as my soul divides. Thank you. Thank you, great last two, great last two lines there. I'm Thank you. Yeah. Would it be okay if I put the link to the book in the um, chat? Yeah, of course, go okay. for it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That. Thank, thank you for that. It's lovely. Um, okay. Um, our next reader is uh, is uh, Antonia. Ooh, hi. Antonia Frizzato. Hi. Thank you. Um, so I've got three new ones. I'll try and read them fast so I can fit them all in. Um, don't, read, don't, don't read them fast. It's fine. Okay. You're doing okay for that. Thank you. Um, so the first one is called um, Grubby Nails. And uh, just a little bit of a content warning, there is some reference of um, sexual abuse. Um, so this is called Grubby Nails. I'm not looking for validation or your appreciation in the form of clumsily chosen compliments or your carefully constructed praise with the sole intention of making me raise my dress. My dress will stay closely pressed against my thighs for as long as all those scripted lies keep falling out of your mouth. You see, 
I'm not looking for someone to make me feel better and your ill thought out filth will make me wetter so it's best if you just stop because this won't end the way you intend it to. Now my skin has grown thick because every little bit has been picked at by entitled hands with grubby nails keen to finger my entrails. So don't expect me not to balk at your touch because everybody has always touched me too much and my armour wears thin in places and it's prone to leaks where the joins sit. And sometimes I accidentally let things in that should be kept at arm's length, but if caught off guard when I don't have the strength, those entitled hands with grubby nails push through the cracks and finger my entrails. And it always feels like my fault. As you take fistfuls of my hair in your hands and you pull too hard to make you hard, and you tell me I love it, I don't. You tell me I want it, I don't. But I lost all the words when you filled my mouth with your worth. So I fill my mouth with the pillow to make one part of me less hollow. And I continue to use my body as currency to buy things that I don't want and I'm tired. And I wish I could close the door. But you're always there taking more of me than I offered and I'm sore. And my hips ache. And this isn't my mistake to make anymore. It's yours. Thank you. Um, this next one is, um, it doesn't get any jollier. This one is about uh, coronavirus. <laughs> Um, so I thought it was about time I wrote one about, about that, so uh, here it is. They are tightening the bands around us, forcing us into each other, but demanding we keep our distance. Herding us like livestock, yet insisting that we stop behaving like animals. My fingers are arthritic from obsessive scrolling, the need to know when the pubs are reopening, because I'm desperate for the connections we are being starved of. My need to touch your faces at more than 20 paces and stand so close I can almost taste you is far greater than my need for safety. And I may have jumped over the fence before the field had recovered from last year's harvest. My quiet toes in creeping shoes stepping towards you, careful not to damage the new shoes, but knowing full well that the farmer would be here soon. With his bulk and his force and his army of workers and his agenda of making this unbearable for us. Whilst they sit atop their machinery, leaving time off. Oh, how did I get on it? So I'm on it. Will grow in that pan if at all, but it doesn't matter because their farmhouse is sprawling and warm. The fire burns in the summer because it can. The table is heavy with sides of beef that they'll never get through before the rock sets in, and we will be left without shelter. And we will never swelter in front of the fire because our wood will never dry. And we will choke down the rotting flesh from discarded carcass that we know will make us sick. And this is it. This is all we've been left with. And we've been conditioned to be grateful. So we're grateful. We're so grateful. Thank you. And then a very short one about heartache, just to bring the trilogy of joy to an end. This one's called Paper Cuts. I've been thinking about you a lot recently. You'd previously been filed at the back of my mind with an easy to read sign saying, do not open. Took so far away that I couldn't glimpse it in passing or find out what was in it without asking for the key. That I'd hidden so deep within myself, I'd forgotten where it was. I underestimate how good I am at picking rocks. So the contents of what was hidden away are now sprawled on my floor. And I'm sat in the middle of the mess, rifling through the sadness that sits too heavy on my chest and my fingers are full of paper cups. I will soak in salt water to make sure I get the most out of how much this hurts. Thank you, that's me done. That was fantastic, Antonia. Thank you. Oh, just really uh, powerful, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, fantastic, all three. <laughs> Big stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I like it when people jump in with comments. It's nice to hear other voices as well. So that's great. I don't know how to write the comments. Where do I do it? The chat. the chat button. The chat button. There's a little button at the bottom. Chat. Have we got yeah. on? You see, I'm, on, on, I'm, on a, I'm on a it's phone, you see. Uh, so it, I won't okay, go. I don't know if it, it's fine if you just say it. To be honest, it's cool. I could just say it at the end, kind of like I've been yeah. doing. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, good. sounds good to me, Roxy. <laughs> yeah, it's not no, the atmosphere, people do say stuff as well. I think it's better. Yeah, yeah I think it's yeah. official. Yeah. Okay, 
So we've got one more reader before the break. Um, and uh, the person to see to wrap up the, uh, which has well, been a very entertaining first half, is Reggie. Hi. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to choose one Drink. thing. Drink. Drink. <laughs> Wait, it's not downloading. Ah, I was going to change my background. Okay. Wait. Before the drink. All right. Uh, okay, so this first one is, you know, for the, all those lovely people that are just there for us. So this is called the caretaker. You know who it is, right? Okay, so this is called the caretaker. Happy birthday, Mr. Caretaker. Really sorry we have forgotten your name. Really sorry we never learned your name. Really sorry we never asked for your name. Happy birthday, Mr. Caretaker. We really appreciate your hard work, keeping the building clean, the walls from molding, the toilets from clogging, the windows opening and the doors locking. Happy birthday, Mr. Caretaker. We are so happy it's your birthday today. And we are so sorry to have forgotten your other birthdays. How many were there? 10, maybe 12? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one more than the others. Happy birthday, Mr. Caretaker. We meant to say hello yesterday and the day before that. We didn't mean to ignore you. It was just a bit too much. Happy birthday, Mr. Caretaker. And just a quick request. Would you mind maybe just today, because it is your birthday, could you please open the basement door and let us out? Drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and wait, I need a drink. Hold on. Ah, okay. And just one more. Well, maybe one and a half. Uh, all right, this is called Above and Beyond. Drink. <clears throat> Above and beyond, you will go, said the mosquito in the man's ear. But all he heard was a buzz. It rattled his brain drove him insane. Above and beyond, that's what he always said in the early hours of the morning. As he was making his coffee and the water began to boil in the, in the pan, blue fire, white water, black pan, black handle, brown coffee, white mug with red, green, blue, and yellow stripes. Above and beyond, those words danced in his mind, put him in gear for another day, he sipped his coffee. Something was missing. Oh, yes, it's the milk. No sugar for me, no sweetener. I like my coffee like I like my life. Bitter in the core and mellow on the edges. Above and beyond shouted the birds on the top of the trees to the man's ears. But all he heard was maddening chirping. Drove him nuts. Mug is empty. Time to start another day, another shift. No surprises to him. The day begins the same way it ends predictable but uncertain. What will come that is unknown to him and that keeps him empty. Above and beyond is the only way forward. The only certainty in life is that everything that starts has an end and we are all trying to guess what is in the middle. Above and beyond, beyond and above. Drink. <laughs> All right. You've got a half a one for Fab, it. absolutely fab. Well then, yeah. <laughs> now, this one might need some audience participation here. Now, the participation <laughs> involves no participation. Uh, what I would like you to do, if you can, uh, all you need to do is very simple. It's a very quick one. I just need you to, when I say go, I just need you to close your eyes and count to a hundred. Okay, that's it. Just close your eyes and count to a hundred. Don't worry, you won't have to count all the way to a hundred. I'll stop you before that. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. All right. All right. One, two, three, go. So much anger for nothing. Fuck the tacos. Fuck the tacos. I'm drunk and all I can think is fuck the tacos. Is that poetic enough for you? Fuck the tacos and the burritos too. 
Stop. Drink. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you are bonkers, mate. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Very you going to do a magic trick and tell us all what number we got to? <laughs> I'll leave it like that. I'll leave it like that. <laughs> I did that, Reggie. You nearly walked into the road. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> oh, so glad you're still with us, Anthony. <laughs> that, that would look that would look good on the police report. I know. <laughs> All he ever said was, "Fuck tacos." I say so much, Steve. It's a good job at the end of the first half. I'd have hate to be the poor poet after the lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Reggie. Um, yeah, we'll take a break. Um, it's what do you want to do? What how long do you want? Ten? Ten? Ten minutes, I reckon. Okay, so I make it just gone up past. So maybe we get here sort of sometime. Well, uh, about 22, just gone 22. Yeah, okay. right, great first half. Right. And, uh, I'll put them on in order, look. Just to, I have, even, I have privately inboxed two or three of you who are just watching to see if you want to be the point in the second half. So just get back to me if you do. And if you don't, I'll take it that you just want to spectate, which is perfectly fine. Okay. So I'll see you all uh, at 22. Ciao. Bye, Steve. All right. Fucking hell, I lost piece of it. They've forgotten to mute again. Yeah, they've forgotten to mute again. <laughs> yeah, we get a, a ten minutes in the life of Amanda and Andy. That's hilarious. <laughs> A little domestic now in the kitchen. We just got to hope that they don't go, oh God, wasn't Antonio shit? <laughs> you so weren't, though. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Thank you. I'm going to go make a drink now. Yeah, me too. That was a great first half, everyone. I really enjoyed that. It was really good. I remember the first one. <laughs> They're still talking about it. Oh no, this is gonna get awkward. I'm, I'm leaving. Well, it's done. Can you, you guys can do how to send it to me and then I'll put a message. Yeah, well, you have to face this. Give me, well, I want to go on your speak more. Yeah. Can you what, sir? Can you send it to me when we transfer? Yeah. Do that one. I'll try it tomorrow, okay? We'll just be messing around tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Okay. What it does is we haven't recorded. What do then? Show me which bit and then I'll put it somewhere I can find and I'll reach yeah. it in the morning because otherwise it'll take forever and I'll look yeah. at it. I know, that's what I mean. I haven't got, I haven't got one laptop yeah. now, so that's a wonderful. What it does is when, it, when you leave the reading, yeah. it saves it automatically. If you've got to pay attention, I'll show you what to do, okay? Okay. I'll move it to the little folder that says yeah. because then it'd be easier for me to yeah. find it. Low system resource. It's messing up your audio quality, so I can't do we might, have, we might have to stay stealth on us. I've turned the internet off on my phone, so that is the picture laptop, don't you? It's because you put that. 
Right, well, I'm going to say to you for the second half, pull my plug out. I'll turn the plug off now. Turn your... To unplug me, please, will you? I'll let the I'll mess up the later, okay? Yeah. I'm going to say to you, second half, I'll put a mess up the mess and we're having laptop trouble here. We'll just got to stay in audio on the second half, okay? Yeah. There's nothing we can do. Something If it's a problem, it'll come back up again, so... Hello everyone. Just me then. Oh, nobody said hello back. Oh, I felt like Billy No Mates there. <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Not that I'm needy or anything, but you know, it's nice to feel someone's with you. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yes, drink. Oh, Antonio's moved venues, look. But why am I sat on a really uncomfortable dining chair when I can sit in the lounge? <laughs> Aunt, are you still walking? No, oh, he must have turned us off. Just got home. Hey! <laughs> Safely, I hope. Uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> you didn't get hit by a car. Uh, no. I hit the car myself. <laughs> How are we all? I enjoyed, all okay? I enjoyed your, your set on uh, the YouTube, yeah? Oh, right. the, the show sold, sold out? Sold out, yeah, it was great. Oh, thank you. A lot of people liked it, but a lot of people didn't expect the start to start the way it did, which I really like. 
<laughs> Keep us on our toes. Uh, a little bit. It's just I just thought it would be really funny if I was sick into my hands, and that's yep. what I do. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate that, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Still there for anyone else that wants to watch it, is it? Yeah, yeah, still there. I mean, I could put the link in the uh, description if you want, but I think it's just everyone else. Great stuff in it. If anyone hasn't heard dad jokes, for example, and sold out, it's <laughs> they're, they're great poems. Uh, I am working on dad jokes too. It isn't finished oh, really? yet, but I am working. Yeah, yeah, because I, I really enjoy doing it. I just think it's great. Yeah. Um. Might have a Halloween dad jokes as well as a, as a oh, that would be good. one. You can borrow my son's um, book of Halloween jokes, you'd yeah. be like, they're much the same. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Mike. I do own one. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> of course I do. All right, let me just get the show for everyone. Sorry about my sound being so bad. Was it hard to hear me? Seems better now. It was a bit ropey at the beginning. Come yeah, you go. Go. I'm going to have to do something about it. Um, I'm at the back of the house, furthest away from the route here. Yeah. But I'll have to commandeer the living room next time. <laughs> Throw my daughter off the PlayStation. <laughs> I'd get a better router. Uh, oh man. Talking in slow mo. <laughs> yeah, it was a shame because we couldn't hear all of the words in the first sort of minute or so and then it settled <laughs> down a bit. Really? Right, poem. Mm. Damn. Right. Sorry about that. Can't be held. Text like that. Yeah. Cheers. It's sorted out though, because I'm be hosting some events, so I need to on the Ethernet and Yeah, you should definitely get closer get to a the new route 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 and... Yeah, it's if I'm closer to the router, but I think I might need a new router as well. Well, there's a it's little a bit break. old. I've been reading this book by Kate Tempest. On oh, connection. Excellent. Has anyone else read it? Just come out. It's highly recommended. I want it. Oh, it's I great. read a, I read an article in the Guardian. Yeah. It's a very easy oh. read. I think it's out of stock now. I tried to get it from a bookshop for someone else, and they said it was out of out of stock. But they'll get more in, no doubt. It's really readable <laughs> about performance and creativity and all that. So a lot of you would love it, I think. Oh, Definitely give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, like thinking about. About it being like giving birth and saying you won't have it, you can't. Once you've put it out, work, put them out into words, it, it it's gone. let go yeah. of what they become. And cleverly, each section yeah, is a do. different part of a, a gig. So it starts with a chapter called Setup, and then it's Sound Check and Doors, Support Act, mm. and it comes up to like, going out there and feeling it happen. So it's a clever structure. Oh, wow. I want to get it. Yeah. Just lost our hosts. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to Steve there. Who, who the back one is back, no doubt, knowing Steve. <laughs> Boy, where is he going? Andy, you need to remember to mute your mic, mate. We can hear you during the breaks, you know. <laughs> Good job we weren't doing anything. Yeah, it's good job we weren't doing that, wasn't it? We did mute it. So you know what it is, Steve. Mike, you've got eagle eagle eye ears, that's why, mate. <laughs> Hold on, you said it's a good thing you're not doing anything. Why do you do things during the other break? <laughs> we have to come to the workshop to find out, won't you, Mr. Brick? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. I remember when everything went for an oom there was a business meeting. Month apparently, where uh, one of the managers was completely naked and didn't know the camera was on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness! Naked, but I think they muted and he didn't. It's okay. Whoops! Oh dear. <laughs> well, my husband was in a, a 
a Zoom meeting for some volunteers for the NHS, and someone actually took the meeting from their bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there was a guy in Italy that went in the shower because he was running late and he didn't turn his camera off. And I think he got sacked, didn't he? Deservedly. <laughs> Why, did he work for Toys R Us or something? One. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, the, uh, like, um, things were, they had to do the whole meeting with her as a potato. Can't hear that, sorry. No, can't hear. No. We've lost your journey. Oh, sorry. On my back. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's a woman who, who got stuck on a potato. Her face was a potato. Oh, yeah, she took the whole meeting like that because she couldn't yeah. undo it. <laughs> <laughs> World's gone crazy. Okay. Um, I've posted them one in order. I've um, I forgot to put Sky in there, so she's on third. So it's Mike, Ben, Sky, Roxy, Esther, Salula, Gordon Zola. And Steve, being good. Um, okay, then, so we'll. Uh, I might. I, I might I'll slip a forty-word story in there somewhere. Um, okay. So to kick us off, um, this half is Mike Booth. Thanks, man. Thank you, everyone. Will you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Right. This. I've just got two. Um, this one is about the thing on the internet where you have to verify that you're not a robot and <laughs> identify <laughs> buses and bloody motorbikes and all that nonsense. <clears throat> so I wrote this last week or a week before. It's just called Verify. When asked to verify, I sigh and try to picture wispy clouds as they scud across an evening sky. The deep mix of purples, blues and greens on the neck of a pigeon or glassy bottle emerald back of a blue bottle fly. The moment when I catch a stranger's eye, we smile and look away, but for a moment we have walked an inner mile, shared a smile, soothed the cry. The surging swelling in my chest as I hear a moving piece of music, taking me out of my bones towards where tears appear and drip unchecked down my flushing cheek. And in that second, beauty banishes doubt. The world seems fragile, alive, but all is clear. Though little makes much sense, and death too is full of power, and I have to steer through flowers, notes, rocks and jagged shore to helm my ship to make life's meaning so much more. And as I stare at screen in depths of nights, I ponder what really makes us not robots, as with my fading eyesight I peer at grids of city sights and try to tick the boxes which show the bikes or traffic lights. Thank you. I'm going to attempt, uh, talking of Kate Tempest, I'm going to attempt a musical background to this one. So never done this before, but I'm pushing my oh, boundaries. Brilliant. So here we go. Music might drown my voice out, which could be a good thing, but we'll give it a try. See if this works. I've changed the music as well, so it's not quite so, so frantic. OK, it's uh, my another Corona poem, I'm afraid, when the masks come off about went round Stratford Arndale, I just found everyone was tense and irritable and angry and impatient. And I thought, how is this changing us as a species? So this is called When the Masks Come Off. When the masks come off, what will we see? A spitting rage or smile of empathy? Who will we be? Will our eyes at last see free? Or will we blindly stumble, led by lies on our TV? Away from the best to a broken rumble, a grumble at how things are compared with how they used to be. Hands scrubbed clean, face rarely fully seen, space demanded in case of infection, 
deflection of broken promises, banning risk-free intimacy. When we've walked the aisles and pavement streets, will we find the one way forward with community or withdraw to individual fear and enmity? When we clear our throats and start to breathe, our lungs set clear without the need for ventilator, inhaler, the failure of all our measures which made us cough our past lives off and wheeze in fear. Will we shed a tear for those now gone or breathe a sigh of relief and abandon the straps of constraint and pledge to live like life full on, to cling on more tightly, our nails bitten down to the quick, candles burned, leaving only charred wick. Society's sick and bridges burned, but turn back to hope and start loving, not fighting. After Brexit, Brexit tears and broken Ramona, now we're all breathing bitter taste of Corona. Our fears, mistrust and deep anxiety, well stoked, will keep on igniting, turning green shoots to dust and exciting hope to ashen marks of penance. But the roots and stump can grow again with nurtured care. We must rebuild the connection. Our natural selection will lift those who share, who carry the loads of others and show in every smile, every loving eye that we are all together, can always spare a hug, a handshake, some time. Whether or not we have seen eye to eye in these debates, our fates are tethered and we must move away from hate. In fact, we will only radiate, only fully shine by many tiny candles lit together, cupped in palm, we can relight the world, reduce the harm, not to our bodies, to the inner light which shines, not in our bones, but in our minds. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Quite guys. a new experience for me that listening to listening to kind of yeah. I've no idea Music, how loud the sound uh, was. That's the only thing. Was it too loud or? Would be a bit no, no, it's louder. perfect actually. Oh really? Could have been a bit louder. Yeah, could have been a bit louder. I turned I think. it down halfway through because I thought it was drowning me out. <laughs> no, 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 Mike, no. Tremendous, mate. Really enjoyed. Thank that, you, Mike. thank you, Andy. Cheers. Yeah, Mike, that was that was incredible. Thanks, Ant. That I, needs to be a video. Can you make that into a video and put it online for people to listen to? Because I think you don't like you're a DJ in a DJ booth, Ant. <laughs> Uh, I am a DJ in a DJ booth. You look, you look like you're doing a radio show or something. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Speakeasy. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone. Okay, next up is Ben Williams. Okay, Ben. Hello, yeah. Hey, Thanks, yeah. Um, got a couple of poems. So the first one is called Rachel from Swindon Part 2. And uh, if you haven't heard of Rachel from Swindon, uh, she's like a Twitter personality, uh, kind of left wing, and she sort of like uh, comes to prominence in the Corbyn sort of era. So she's getting quite a lot of... Uh, targeting these days uh, but this is poem about Rachel from Swindon uh, they're going to work on Rachel from Swindon this is the Corbyn shakedown, this is the proverbial all grief truncheon class conjunction she's on a list with Damo and red till I'm dead all you curtain switches clothesline snitches that Dirt, going through bins like a Russian accessory. She's from Swindon, but it could have been Warrington. Milkshake Marty in a bar at home box room. She's David Goodmeets, Ricky Tomlinson. While you were channeling Del Boy and Frank Spencer, the TV stars got older. Many, are you not hearing me? No, not very well. All right. Um, no, but Ben, we could, you're crackling a bit. It's a shame because I was really enjoying that. Yeah, sometimes and I, if you switch your video off and just let me. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best bet, Ben. Try that. No, yeah, that can turn off your video yeah. off. Yeah. Try again. Try that then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I'll, 
I'll start again then. Oh, that sounds better. <laughs> All right, cheers. That's yeah. Better, yeah. 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 So this is Rachel from Swindon, part two. Okay. The guy <laughs> to work on Rachel from Swindon. This is the Corbyn shakedown. This is the proverbial or grieve truncheon, class conjunction. She's on a list with Damo and Red Till I'm Dead. All you curtain switchers, clothesline snitchers, dirt, dirt, going through bins like a Russian accessory. She's from Swindon, but it could have been Warrington. Milkshake Marty in a Barrett home box room. She's Jay Goody meets Ricky Tomlinson. While you were channeling Del Boy and Frank Spencer, the TV stars got older. Many ball bag Alan Sugar, all the fakes. Rinsed out fake in the food bank queue. Marcus Rashford, social welfare, 21. The fence patrollers are losing their collective Ron Seal shit. Blacklist. What? You can't blacklist Marcus <laughs> Rashford. For fuck's sake, think about it. Make it about her trainers. Implied lifestyle. And who gave her that platform? Voices of the humdrum towns. Speak up wet verges for the real butter press. Thanks. <laughs> that was great. Excellent, Ben. I don't feel the sound. I think. Can we see you? Can we see you on your, your next one? Oh, I'll try that then. Because I, yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't know if it makes much difference, to guys. Do you? Ben, on the set, you're going to come back in the video. Try push yourself back a bit more, because if someone's fine, you do these. If you're moving your arms around or you're too close to the camera, it can oh. push static sometimes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, if you can stand on one leg as well. Conflicting and stuff. The other idea, Ben, is why did you try climbing on the lampshade? <laughs> that was great, Ben. Really enjoyed that. Seriously, Put another stuff, coin mate. in the internet meter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you used to do the radio. <laughs> All right, this one's called Border. Um, I went to Wales for a day about a month ago. So, yeah, the, I just thought they were a bit more serious about coronavirus over there. But anyway... It's called Border. This old fellow wouldn't wear a mask. English guy, black country accent. But to security, mainly for masks and distancing. My mask was beginning to stink. Three days straight wearing, long train journeys. I hadn't washed it. It smelled of things I'd been eating and drinking. Plus, decay. No, I was queuing now. for coffee at a little cabin on the seafront. Some mellow music was playing and the sun broke through the clouds. The woman trusted it out with my slice of toasted banana loaf. I wandered into the dunes. When I crouched down, the wind stopped, stretched out, very cosy. Just watched the comings and goings at the cabin. A woman bustling around serving customers and a guy hosing down his windows as the tide went out. Thank you. Okay, Ben. Is that it, mate? Yeah? Yeah, thank you for that. Great stuff. Okay, uh, next reader is someone who's new to, new to speak easy. It's um, Sky. Um, hi everyone. Um, I'm new to Speakeasy, so I want to thank Andy first for inviting me over. And uh, I'm not in the UK, I'm in Zurich, but then this made it all possible that I can attend. So happy to be happy to be here. Hi. 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 And yeah, I really enjoyed the poems, the different teams, and all that. It's it's amazing to hear all those. So. Um, um, what I'm going to read to you is um, a poem from my book. The title is Beard. And um, 
I don't know if it fits, but the theme that I chose before I heard all this is actually um, like a passionate evening kind of poem. So uh, I'm just I'm just sticking to it. So um, in the book, there are actually um, mandalas like this. I don't know if you can see. Something like that. Oh, there you go. And um, the poem corresponds to the mandalas in it. Not all, but some. So the first one, the title is um, Wild Callings. The trails she blazed, unexplored passion, and the exquisite notes of stories she keeps. She is wild beauty, one couldn't dare resist knowing. As I skim my fingers on her skin that bore the pain of markings, I felt the weight of her world and the strength of her character. As I lay my eyes on her beseeching gaze, she calls for no understanding not recognition nor acceptance, yet one couldn't help but paint her essence. She promises no one her world, but one could only wish to exist and wait to be summoned to experience her wildness. So that's the first. Love that. Thank you. And um, the other one is, so uh, the other one is um, guilty pleasures. In the dark alleys of his mind, along with covert longing, he held her with his burning gaze while masking his desire with hate. Yet the moonless night tempts hungry flesh to consummate. Selfless yet selfish, in the shadows he revealed, his lips confessed his tongue offered her no chance to protest. His kiss engulfed her moans of pleasure as the darkness blessed their sins beyond measure. And thank you. The last one is, um, it's still very passionate, but it's the last. It, the title is Into Her Depths. Like a moth to a flame, enticingly coaxing, I am drawn into her depths of cool smoke and warm embers. Burning dangerously with desire, she tastes inexplicably of ice and fire. Like a siren's calling, invitingly urging, I throw myself selfless to drown into her depths a place of untamed beauty and haunting secrets. In a world full of war and hate, her body is my temple and she is my religion. Scared yet spirited, as she laid bare the demons she had slayed and spared, I can't help but fall into the depths of her. That's it. Thank Excellent you. stuff. Well done. Brilliant. Thanks. Really beautiful, yeah. And awesome background. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's from Zoom. <laughs> I kind of have a dirty wall over here. Are you, are you in like Norway or somewhere? Or? <laughs> no, it's here. My kids did not register for today, so I just in, like, the Northern background. Lights while po with poetry. It's brilliant. Yeah. Otherwise, you would see here a very messy wall, which my kid painted today afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about. It looks pretty normal to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Question is, Reggie, is that you after drink then, is it? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's just a picture of your mind, Reggie. <laughs> yeah, I do. <know. laughs> If you want to put some links up to your, you know, put a link up to your work or website or to the book, then please, you know, do it in the chat. Yeah, please feel free to do it. Okay, we'll do. Thanks. Right, thank you. For, thanks for sharing those great stuff. Thank you very much and good luck with the publication. Uh,
Um, okay, next up is Roxy. Roxy Wolf. Hey. Hi, guys. Um, okay, so I've decided to do um, like I found I found the lockdown really quite difficult, if I'm honest, with my mental health. So I've had a real big writer's block. Um, for a lot of it, but um, I've, I wrote a new one, you know, uh, kind of it's, but it, 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 it's taken quite a while to get get that uh, flow going really, but I'm gonna do two old ones and a, and a new one, but um, this one's called Medicine. Um, okay. It's all the medicine you need, the realizations, the little epiphanies, the moments of clarity the points when everything makes sense just for a second. When the sunlight breaks through a tiny crack and finds a way to light a room. It's all the medicine you need, the realizations, the little epiphanies, knowing someone else is out there thinking of you and smiling. Or knowing that you're learning to grow stronger when you're alone holding hands with those demons and showing them which way they should go. It's all the medicine you need, the realizations, the little epiphanies, the moments you're still breathing, the moments your heart skips beating and you realize that these moments are fleeting. When you grow through tiny movements, when you feel like crushed velvet, and you hate yourself a little less than usual. You're coping and you realize that is enough. It's all the medicine you need, the realizations, the little epiphanies, connecting with the addict and behaviors change when you are ready. When you feel the truth in your soul and you laugh hysterically at your denial, Reflection, it's so powerful. It's just so powerful that sometimes you forget the breakthrough. It's all the medicine we need, the realizations, the little epiphanies. Thank you, that's, that's uh, one. Wow, wow. Uh, this one, yeah, this one is, uh, yeah, I suppose just about uh, about lockdown really how I, this this came up this this has come out of lockdown feelings I guess it, I haven't got a title for it wake up and start dreaming days there's an undercurrent of ambivalence I can't remember anything but memories appear from nowhere lusting over baselines and finding the perfect way to enjoy them. Imagining myself in foreign lands with underground mutts in back alley clubs, escaping the mundane with the insane and craving something new with every breath. Repeating behaviors that you refuse to accept are feeding those addictive personalities, the post-mortem of your actions. The consequences riddled in despair, but still embracing the sun beating down on your face. Certain fear in every tear while I pull the veil over my face to gauge in vultured, cultured pace of a city lost to war, of a soul stole to war. A quiet metropolis is sacrilege. And I sit on this ridge of sin and safety, looking down at the worker bees with their messed up knees and tongues in cheeks for the mildly meek. Thank you. That's, um, and I think, yeah, I'm gonna do just this one quick one here. Uh, it's, it's an old one, but I've actually changed the title. So it's called Sleeping with the Devil. Um, Let me be your medication. I want to save you, but behave though, cause this will end badly. In bed, I turn to see your face, 
replaced with emotions that I thought were traced. Put your hands on me. Don't ever feel unwanted in our place. I missed you last night. It felt different, you were not here. Your presence gives me purpose. It takes away my fear. And I'll give you your control to wrap you up in fantasy, unlock your inner weaknesses and prey on your vulnerability. Shower you with unrealistic compliments. You're too sad to believe it true. I'll take your guard away and batter your ego while I shatter your new you. I don't want to hear a sound or it will all be over. I want to be worshipped while you service. My gain is my worth. Your pain is my girth. You're saying but I'm worse. This stain is your rebirth. I'll put my spell on your heart and turn up your desires and I'll whisper sweet nothings but no empathy transpires I'll make you feel like you're floating and I'll hold your face with such care I'll pretend that I'm interested but I'm not really there I'm a dreamer a believer I'll always get what I want I'm a charmer I'm, an, I'm a deceiver and I'm still having my fun so if you're hurting while I'm flirting and you're needy while I'm seedy, well, I'll finish this magic and be flying because you're just tragic while you're trying. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Wow, fantastic, Roxy. It's fantastic. Explosive, but also tender. Thank you. Do you know I felt re- it felt really comfortable for the first time ever. I've done a few. I've done a handful of these Zoom meetings because I'm really, I don't. I, I'm really nervous in them. I don't. I can't do that. I find them really uncomfortable, and I've really felt comfortable this time. Mm, and uh, you know, so I, I thank you guys. And I think that's that's just because it's such an, a beautiful group. This, you know, it yes, really awesome. makes me feel comfortable. You know, and, and so thank you, thank you guys for that. Thank it was you. amazing. Thank you. Thank you, It's worth noting, actually, that these sort of Zoom things aren't for everybody, because, Amanda, you tell me something, you don't always feel comfortable in part of groups like this, do you? So, well, I just get zoomed out a bit if I do too many. Yeah, but it's, no, it's true. It's, it's sort of thing, it's, I think it's a very different environment to get used to. So great to see you back, Roxy. Thank you. Thank you. It's, that's what, it's fantastic. To be, it's so great to see everyone's faces and just... Mm. It's you know great. I think, so. I think it's a bit more intimate Zoom. Sometimes. Yes, it is. It is. I think oh, that's yeah. what I'm saying, Mary. Yeah. It, yeah. it makes me a bit. I'm like, oh, it's intimate, but in a such an unusual way. I say but, um, yeah, I find it more nerve wracking actually. <laughs> <laughs> you were excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Hi guys. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Roxy. Thanks for that. Um, Okay, our next uh, poet is Esther Koch. Hi, everyone. Sorry, Um, I've kind of been below the screen listening. I've not, yeah, I've, yeah. It's been a great night with some really great readers. Thanks, Roxy, for that. That was lovely. And Ben. Thank you. Ben, I really enjoy your stuff. It's just hysterical. I love it. Um, I've got some new stuff um, that I'd like to share. I've got like my first real real life gig on Sunday. It's going to be a, like a distanced gig. I mean, we have to play everything by ear, don't we? Because tomorrow we could wake up and we're not allowed to leave the front door. So um Supposedly, I'm actually going to be on real life, in real life, on a stage, not a hologram. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll get on with it. Uh, This this first poem's called The Celtic Myth of Esther Kosh's Elusive Kiss. (laughs) A fortnight of ripe blackberry lips until Ornia quits the aisles and takes her repose in Tir Nanog. 
They slip from my face onto the pavement where only a rogue child might pick. Fourteen days, and I am all gobbled up, half-heartedly. A passers-by novelty. A snack for the wee folk who occupy the brambles, the Dina she. And like a Blackpool commodity, I'm taken home and out of context I become a cheap oddity. Spare supermarket gladioli in late September. Stuck in the whoopsie aisle, buffeted by the frozen goods chill that delivers autumn. I am an expired spruce. A last knocking's portent of my body's seasonal importance. I waft an easy slothen attraction in your direction, a reluctant inflorescence, but not one of you desires my corporeal presence. My sexual evanescence invokes not even an encore. I invoke a latent femininity that I wield like a sword forged in Hippolyta's hordes. But it's like you're wading along a western trawn and evading my gradients. You desire a voice less deep and a deeper throat. A lighter conversation, but a deep decolletage, a deeper dinner bowl flanked by an even deeper gravy boat. Like silt in a Kerry Dell, you'd have me sail down the sticks into a fey hell. Tiaras and baking paper wings. Wands sharper than needles prick my philtrum prettiness that stings. And for all this, of my elusive kiss, the salmon in the boin still sings. You bleed in Egypt, Esther. Be patient. I've taken counsel with the trout, and they know about these things. They're gluttonous for your pout. But by Bridget's word, your kiss is bespoken for kings. Thank you. Wow. Um, Phenomenal, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd, it was it was quite experimental that one. I use I, I use a lot of Irish. Well, I see a lot of Irish. There's a few Irish words in there, so I hope I've I hope I've done them justice and pronounced them right. We'll see. Um, I'll give you. I'll do. I'll do. I'll just do one more because mine are all quite long. Uh, this one's called Mary Magdalene. I sew thumbtacks into the carpet like knuckle bones. The pain in my feet will dictate my fate. The circumference of the puncture will delineate a juncture. My anguish is a low-lying nimbostratus, halogenic, deep Byzantium, arrogant and residual like the Ottoman Empire, an iodine contrast medium, but not the kind that will connect me to the council of my ancestors. There's clearly something wrong with my psyche, complex and divine concubine of love. She's such a slut. Everyone has some. But it's okay to share a bit of yourself with everyone, push cylinders aside to reveal a crescent-shaped gash, loiter on the threshold of a sepulchre, maybe I'm a bit of a necromaniac. Sometimes rather than inviting men in, you're coaxing them out. Captain Morgan and copper eyes. Like the bangles worn by the ankles of Canaan fisherwomen. Dowsing linen in the Sea of Galilee, I deign to believe I've inherited some of that wisdom. To believe that Magdala could be a woman's Medina. Instead of whores and cloven-footed daughters of Lilith, its shores should traject a twinkling light and invite a pilgrimage for matriarchs and alchemistresses, for the Malalas and the Makedas, the Svengalian, the proletarian and the middling women. Mary Magdalene was an intermediary. She was the equilibrium of her husband's human and ethereal states. We're born into the halfway, but we made an apocryphery an apocryphy of purgatory, drew nectar and got stung from our own apiaries, drank goat's milk from an errant flock, doors with shitty locks, be facile, be fervent, but other than acting as a vector for the furthering of 
Captain Morgan and Copper Eyes, altogether worthless, machete-minded. I take introspective swipes at myself with a sword forsworn for somebody else, rain-stick legs from the loose filament. I don't take care of myself. Composure, good looks and diligence. Somewhere in Constantinople, her gospel was relegated to an inferior shelf. Thanks. Wow. Thanks, Esther. I think lots of lots of comments there from people. So um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Okay, um, I've got two more people down to read. And um, does anybody else who hasn't read tonight, do you want, we've got room for you to read one poem or a short piece if you like. If any, but um, just message me if you want to do that. Otherwise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, anyway, we're gonna move on. Our next, um, and possibly our penultimate uh, poet of the night is Gordon Zola. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. You can, right? Uh, there's somebody uh, posted on Facebook said that uh, doing Zoom performances is uh, just like a Monday seance, because everyone starts with, can you hear me? Is there anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I feel like that every time I come on, because I am to technology what Boris Johnson is to rule in the country. Um, uh, and uh, I think this short poem sums up the situation at the moment. When your world's left barren and broken and your life's in disarray, you never realise what treasures you had until they've all been stripped away. But we shall overcome someday. Thank you. Okay, as Eve already said at the end of this month, it's uh, All Hallows Eve. And here's a tale of caution for All Hallows Eve. I was cruising the clubs, dying for a drink, when I spotted this species I believed extinct. Her neck was tender, succulent and ripe. I could tell at a glance she was just my blood type. Blood, blood, glorious blood. You can count on the corpuscles to make you feel good. Girls sanguine or sallow, where they bleed I will follow. And then we can wallow in glorious blood. Her smile was seductive, almost obscene. Her come on as blatant as any pawn queen. She flashed eyes that glistened like the northern star and dug her talons in my palm as she led me to the bar. She said, Darling, this red vine is very good. But between you and I, I prefer blood. I don't know why she spoke like that. She comes from Berry. Blood, blood, glorious blood. There's nothing quite like it for fueling the stud. <laughs> Let your teeth do the probing. Suck out my hemoglobin. No need to go roving for glorious blood. I thought. This is it, my destiny, kismet, fate. After all these years searching, I found my no soul mate. She said, my head is swimming with all of this vine. Let's go somewhere quiet. 
your place or mine? I think she meant swimming. Yeah. We arrived at a chalet at the undead of night, and she shed her dress in the pale moonlight and led me naked to a four-poster bed and shackled my hands behind my head. And when she impaled herself on my engorged manhood, I swear by Santa! Satan! Sorry, it was much better than blood. blood <laughs> glorious blood. It starts with a trickle and ends in a flood. I'll suck you till you're hollow. Where you bleed, I will follow. Then we can wallow in glorious blood. There was a trace of a smile. I'm sure she blinked. Then, like Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct, she flung her arms into the air and said, Darling, would you like your steak medium or rare? No, I cried. As my flesh ripped apart. I forgot the words. No, I cried. As my flesh ripped apart. What is that? Past lies flushed before me as my soul did depart. And I cursed the face of my blonde betrayer that had just been shafted by Buffy, the vampire slayer. Thank you. Evolved. Oh my God, that was fantastic. <laughs> wow. Excellent. Oh, it's magnificent. The review performance of the night, fantastic. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. That was great. Amazing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks both. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, our next reader is the Saluna Hour. Hello. So uh, I'm going to read um, one that I wrote last night. So it doesn't have a title yet. If you have any suggestions for titles, <laughs> feel free to put them in the chat. This evening I awoke and gargled cobblestones and I spat out puffer fish stuffed into iron suits finishing Monday commutes. I couldn't stop myself from calling out at least the only chains I wear are on my bondage trousers. Mm -hmm. This is the place wh where you're either old or waiting to be. The streets where rich people come to die, because at least it will be dignified. Death comes bona fide. This is the day I need to be nursed. But the green spaces are no sources of solace, because you're not a queen and there are slugs in your chalice. The town hall chimes are a funeral drum, and what was once conifer is now a Herculean corkscrew to hang yourself from. Thank you. Wow. And then uh, on a similar sort of vein, um, I've got another long poem that was just about um, a walk that I took the other week and documented called Sun, Set Your Intentions. I make my way to the highest vantage point in the park and sit in a sanded golf bay. A lone man and his dog approach me and I'm not sure which I should hide the smell of fear from more. I'm here to watch the sunset and identify some fungi, giant polypore, an ingrown toenail of the mighty tree. I'm here to watch the sunset. It turns out I'm not the only one. Two lads produce clouds of smoke from a nearby base. I think I can go higher and further away to Gulf 11. The sky is streaked with mellow pink and an immense swarm of flies hover above. It's getting colder now and I'd rather not walk back in the pitch black. So I set my intentions. And the sun does too. I scale down the other side of the hill. Home will be warm and waiting. A crow flies low over the grass. The sun sets. It's nothing impressive, a dwindling. A pit bull scarpers around, chasing something it cannot reach. 
I am greeted by a thin slice of the moon as I pass a traveling salesman banging on a door shouting, what about warm callers? Hello? Hello? A black cat dives into its window. An overzealous car revs its engine. I see a sign that reads dignity but has none. I turn the volume of the world down. I can appreciate the beauty of churches and I know how those people want to wash their hands at just the sight of you and how my lovers have looked like old ladies and young men and there isn't that much of a distinction and how weird the bus station looks when it's closed and how my first thought when getting ready to leave the house is, can I run in these shoes? Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Right, Being going. greeted by a slice of the moon. That, that, I love that line. I like how um, it was like fearful, but um, not over the top. It was very pared mm. down, but it made it a bit more sinister for me because you pared mm. it down. So I really like that. Thank you. Anybody got a title? It's a Lola. <laughs> um, what, for the first point, not for the first point. Um, that's great. Okay, we have got got a couple couple of messages in, so we we'll go with Steve, and then we we've got Anthony, I think, to round us off. So next up, very very patient, it's been really patient. Uh, hope it enjoyed uh, the readers as much as I have and other people have. First time to speak easy. A big welcome to Steve Mingle. Hello, 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 hello. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to have to tell you, I've gone down the Reggie route, oh. and, uh, <laughs> which is not necessarily advisable when you're on last. So uh, this, this could go anyway. Drink. Um, and the, the poem I'm uh, going to do for you requires me, to, requires me to adopt a very aggressive persona. Um, but please don't be alarmed. It's just an act. <laughs> OK, now this. This is a poem I wrote uh, before lockdown, and it kind of ceased to be applicable for quite a while. But now that people are going shopping again in a kind of quasi normal fashion, um, I think it's uh, I think it's as pertinent almost at least as it was then. And it's called Old Man with Anger Management Issues versus Automated Self-Service Checkout Machine in Marks and Spencers. <laughs> and it goes like this. Even before I scan my first item, I'm losing my rag. As the machine asks if I'm using my own bag, which I am, and it's in the designated position, so why is it being treated with such suspicion? Unidentified item in the bagging area. By the time the assistant arrives, I'm going spare. It's just me shopping from elsewhere. What's your problem? If I put it on the floor, I'd only forget it and have to come back half an hour later to get it because I'm such a dozy sod. You'll get an unidentified item next time, all right, and half your customers will run off in fright because it'll be an industrial-grade sledgehammer and it's going right through your fucking screen. To increase my levels of aggravation, a shrill voice provokes pure aggravation. Have you scanned your Sparks card? You stuck-up, presumptuous, computerized Muppet. In Boots, they ask, have you got an Advantage card? In Tesco's, it's it. Have you got a club card? So why does this automated voice of doom always automatically assume that I've got a Sparks card? As if it's required by law before I can even enter your store. And if I can't produce it on demand, some flunky will grab me by the hand and say, get off my land. Well, I've exercised my constitutional right not to have a Sparks card and you can't revoke it. So put that in your fucking pipe and smoke it. I take up the Indian meal offer. Four items for a tenner. You'd think that'd be a no-brainer. But it proves to be a misguided notion when the machine fails to spot one of them's in the promotion. This gets me in a proper lava, and soon there's a right old palaver as the assistant says the codes don't match. So we have to start again from scratch and re-scan not just every component of the special deal on the Indian meal, but every single item of shopping. It would have been so much quicker, slicker, and better for my ticker if I'd gone to an assistant in the first place. So why didn't I? Because the queues were so long. And why were they so long? Because so many people hate those fucking machines. Then, to my absolute terror, 
I realise I've made the schoolboy error of purchasing a box of chocolate cherry liqueurs, which on account of their minuscule alcoholic content are classified as an age restricted item. So why the hell do you refuse to stack them alongside the booze instead of with the Jaffa cakes and the chocolate flakes and the oatmeal bakes? And why don't you witless bunch of cocks put the alcohol content on the box? Because it's virtually zero. You could binge eat 16 boxes of these, one a minute, and still be under the drink drive limit. Not that I'd advocate eating 16 boxes of chocolate liqueurs then going out for a spin because a sense of nausea would soon set in and you'd throw up over the steering wheel, which when you're doing 70 isn't ideal. But for now, that's by the by. An assistant comes to verify that I appear to be over 25 years of age. Not the greatest challenge to her powers of observation and after a depressing lack of deliberation, she says, no need for identification. Well, thanks very much. Now I'm being told, really, how dare you? I've removed an item from the bagging area. Well, of course I have, because my bag's full and I need to start a new one. What do you expect me to do, you electronic clown? Pile them all up till they come crashing down, causing breakages galore and spilling yogurt all over the floor so your customers go arse over tit and you end up being served up with a writ, demanding massive sums in compensation for broken bones and dislocations, which are all just figments of the imagination of fucking bastard ambulance chasers. I almost forgot. I've got this promotional voucher. 20% off breakfast cereal. But frankly, that's just immaterial, because there is not the faintest hope this hapless machine will ever cope with that. Is it really worth creating a scene and acting like a drama queen to achieve a saving of 87 pence? Well, it is actually. It's not the money, it's the principle. But once you start saying stuff like that, you realize you're not just a prat, in fact, you're a fucking wanker and you shouldn't be allowed out in public. Just stay at home forevermore and have it all delivered to your door. Because that's where all of this is heading. That's what all your staff are dreading. When they can close the doors to all your stores and make everyone redundant. Well, aren't you fucking clever? Thank you. Wow. We've all been there. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Dave. Thank you for that. Okay. Are we okay for time? I was going to look to wrap it up at near, as near as quarter two as we can because then that's two hours. So we're concluding the break. So we've got two more people. Okay. And um, and you go last, mate. Because and uh, so next up, the first time to speak, please. It's just message me. Um, hey, it's Isaac. Anybody? Oh. Hey, oh, sorry. Um, hi, how's it going? This was uh, incredibly impromptu. Um, and I feel like somewhat of an imposter because I, yeah. I do it to, to, to music um, as well. So I like, like Mike, but not half as sophisticated. So I'm tend to, I tend to be uh, hated within the spoken word scene. Um, but I also play a ukulele as well, right, uh, which, <laughs> which means uh, I'm fairly hated in the music scene as well. Um, so it's not very often anyone will, will have me. Um, yeah, this is song, this is a corona song, a coronavirus um, tune for for what to do. But uh, if you if you're bored during the lockdown period, and it goes like this. You've been in isolation for a week or more, and you've started to have a dry cough. You've started to worry that the end is nigh, and you're wanting a fitting send off. The hospitals are closed and there are no more masks and there's no paper left to wipe your ass. But if you take my advice and you follow my words, you can still make this a better world. If you just cough on a Tory, they got us into this mess. Cough on a Tory on behalf of the NHS. Take your daily jog down to your nearest mansion, find Rupert Murdoch or Richard Branson. Cough on a Tory, make this the plague of the underworked and the overpaid. Yes, just cough on a Tory, it's such an easy thing to do. Cough on a Tory if you've got any sign of the flu. There are 
old and vulnerable, and when they get ill, they sure be grateful for that 35 mil in the NHS. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to that, no one ever gets sick. Yes, Boris Johnson's a corona cunt. Next, let's get Pretty Patel and Jeremy Hunt. Let's make the end of the quarantine a working class revival. Hashtag cough on a Tory. Let's make it go viral. There you are, that's my contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, Isaac. I know you've been there a few times for Isaac. It's great to see you form, mate. Oh, thank you very much. It's, 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 it's yeah, no, it's a nice event. I oh, very much appreciate it. You can it. come thank again. You. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, our last uh, uh, speaker, our last poet performer tonight is. Um, and Briscoe. Jesus Christ, how do you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant, I genuinely meant. Um, okay, so uh, just quickly before I go, because this is very, very short, I wrote it the other day and I'm aware of time. Uh, I just want everyone to know here, here and now that um, you're all viable. Um, you're all artists and you're all viable. The arts are viable. And anyone who tells you that the arts aren't viable can't fucking run Microsoft Excel. So what the fuck is viable? <laughs> um, it's ironic that Microsoft Excel is full of cells and so is the virus, but one of them works. Uh, okay, so um, this is just something I wrote the other day. It's only very short. See if you like it. I'm not going to go on camera because I've just had a shower and we had a discussion about that during the break. I look like the Dulux dog trying to tell its dad that it's just not a phase. Um, so this is just a poem. I eat light bulbs for breakfast to give me a healthy glow. Drink liquidized laxatives as I'm always on the go. Chill brillo pads for chewing gum. I'm always wired. I used to be the Michelin man, but now I'm never tired. I'm 100% pure orange juice. I can't concentrate. Like water, I can be liquid, a gas, a solid, many different states. I'm a skeleton in skin clothing, an inevitable ghost. Beaming myself far and wide from coast to coast. I'm actually in the corner of a room at a party phone in hand, staring at a stream, a living at stand. That's it. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Brilliant, Anne. Thanks, Anne. Great stuff, Anne. Well done. Good work. Thanks, Anne. Thanks for that. It's really it's good awesome. to hear your voice. Great finish, mate. Duper duper. And did you want to say a few words about the next speak easy or sorry guys you see you've caught me out yeah um, we're taking bookings on sunday this weekend onwards from about 12 noon onwards so if you want to get a slot get in touch with me on facebook or the speak easy page and if you i know there's a few people that don't have facebook and i'll be speaking to my email okay isaac i don't have your contact details are you on facebook i am indeed mate are you What's your last name? Or are you down Andy and Poet. Drop me an ad. Wicked. Nice one. She'll do that now. Yeah, and Speakeasy's got its own page as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. What a night. Brilliant. It's been brilliant. a brilliant night, Andy and Steve. Thank you. And everybody's fantastic tonight. Really good. Oh, it's been incredible yeah, quality yeah, tonight, yeah. guys and girls. Thank you very much. Second up. Second Really out. enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. It was so great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. I feel so healed when I've been <laughs> been been involved, you guys. Fantastic, yeah. Okay, this is Thank, you, Thank you very Thank much. You. See you soon. Cheers for everything, guys. Didn't think I'd make it. I'm so glad I did. Cheers, Steve. Yeah. See you on November, guys. Stay safe. Remember to cough on a Tory. Cough on a Tory. Good night. Good night, Aunt. <laughs>